Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about Mobius function, and what I want to show, I want to show the cool property of the Mobius function. But before I'm going to discuss this property, let's remind of the Mobius function. So we go, we want to take any natural number d, and then we're saying the Mobius function of this natural number d is zero if d has a square factor. So for example, if we were looking for Mobius function of four, four is two squares, so zero factor, so we just have a square factor two to the uh, second power, so it's zero. But if my number d is a product of r primes, then my Mobius function is equals to negative one to the power of r, where this is r is the number of primes. So if I am looking for Mobius function of three, I will get uh, negative one because I have only one prime number of three. And then I'm going to look in for six. I have six a product of two primes, two and three. So my Mobius function is going to be equals to one. Uh, and for this property, what I'm talking about, I'm basically saying if I'm going to take any natural number n, and I'm going to consider all factors of my n, and if I'm going to sum up my Mobius function corresponding to all factors of n, then sum is going to be equal to zero. Okay, but let before we go and prove this, let's just consider a couple of examples. Let's take a look uh, when my n is some prime number, for example, five. Uh, we know what that 5 is prime, and from here we'll get that uh, the only factors by definition of prime is 1 and prime itself, so 5. So Mobius function of uh, factors d is just mu of 1 plus mu of 5. So in this case I will get 1 minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, so for prime, and you can see actually this works for any prime numbers, because any prime numbers has... Uh, just two factors. Okay, let's take another number. Let's take uh, number six, where six is, is not a prime number. So what is my mu of d in this case? No, we know it's zero, but let's uh, let's check this. Uh, I know that six is a product of two prime numbers, two and three. So uh, I have the possible factors d as one, two, three, and six. So from here we'll get that my mu of d is mu of 1 plus mu of 2 plus mu of 3 plus mu of 6. And from here I'm going to use a table and you can see mu of 1 is 1. This is two are uh, just prime numbers and we know mu of prime numbers is minus 1. So it's going to be minus 1 minus 1. And mu of 6 is a... Uh, product of two prime numbers, which is 1, so I'm going to have plus 1. And I have 1 minus 1, 0, minus 1 plus 1, 0, so it equals to 0. Yeah. So we took a couple of examples and we saw that this formula works. But by taking examples, we are not doing proof. Usually it's called counterexample if you want to disprove something. So let's actually prove the statement. And how are we going to prove the statement? We need to analyze our n. We need to analyze how many factors we're going to have. But we know if we're going to take any natural number n, uh, by fundamental, how it's called, like fundamental theorem, I forgot, oh my gosh, I forgot the name. But what I'm trying to say is that any natural number can be written as a factor in a unique way of prime numbers. So, uh, I'm going to write my n as p to the 1, p to the r, alpha to the r, when alpha is some prime num uh, natural numbers, and uh, pi is a prime number. Okay, but then what we're going to do next? You're going to take a look at this expression. First, we don't know how many prime factors that we have. Second, we don't know what is our powers. So, to determine how many d's do we have, it's going to be almost like kind of impossible. No, it's possible, but it's going to be super difficult. But what we're going to use, we're going to use the definition of the Mobius function. And we can see for definition of the Mobius function, our Mobius function is going to be equal to zero if my factor d has square factor. So what does it mean? It means if I'm going to take my d equal to p1 square, for example, uh, if my alpha 1 is bigger than 1. Then this mu of this function, mu of d, going to be equal to 0. Because it has a square factor. 
And every time I'm going to take some factor d that has a square in it, it's gonna make uh, it's gonna give me zero. So what can I conclude? Even if n is written in this form, I can say that I'm interested in n as just a product uh, of distinct prime numbers. Why? So I'm saying only contribution of this prime, of this product of prime numbers, is gonna give me some non-zero value for my mu function. So I'm interested for which n, uh, for which d, how many d's I can take uh, from this expression. So basically what I'm interested in, I'm interested in taking binomial Newton. We know uh, how many prime numbers we have are prime numbers. Prime uh, numbers. And among these prime numbers, I want to f find all possible factors d. But all possible factors d, it means the first type of d that I'm going to take just p1, p2, like up to pr. And how many choices I have? I have r choices. So basically I'm saying I have n uh, plus 1 choices. Uh, this, is, this is incorrect. I need to say the number of d equals. So I'm looking how many d's I have. So I have n choose 1 choices for uh, when I'm taking just one prime numbers. If I'm going to take two prime numbers, p1, for example, times p2, p1 times p3, and etc. So among our objects, I'm choosing two objects. So I have n choose, no, 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 sorry, not n. Here's r, and here's r. r choose two. Yeah, and etc. Then I can choose my d as a product of three prime numbers, so r choose three. And I'm going to do this up to uh, r choose r. When my d is going to be just uh, the whole thing. Okay, so I found my numbers of d. But what is next? The next step, I need to actually to calculate uh, my sum d divides n mu of d. So a little summarize. Uh, we know that our n written in this form, but every time when I have uh, that my uh, divisor d has a square factor, my mu function is zero. So I'm only interested in this product. So I'm looking how many numbers d I have for this product. And we calculated this. But next thing, you can think, okay, it's, since it's impossible to calculate how many uh, prime factors do I have over here. No, no, how many prime factors? Uh, write each term separately. But we don't need to write each term separately. Why? Because we know the number of our terms. And here we have a correspondence. When we have uh, only one prime number as a product, we know, for example, like 2, 3, 7. We know some uh, mu of d in this case. For example, let's say this is called uh, kind of uh, I have already p, like alpha 1 times alpha 2, alpha 3, and alpha r. So I know if my prime belongs to alpha 1, I have that mu of alpha 1 is going to be equal to negative 1. Because it's only one prime. When my alpha 2, my prime belongs to alpha 2, then my mu of alpha 2 is going to be equal to 1. Mu of alpha 3 going to be equals uh, to negative 1. And the last one, mu of alpha r, is going to be equals uh, negative 1 to the power of r. Yeah, so what is my next step? I know... Uh, ah, my next step is like this. So I know Every time I'm choosing element from here, my mu of this element will be equal to negative 1. And how many elements do I have? I have exactly r choose 1 element. So I can say uh, I'm subtracting r choose 1. The next step, I know for every, for every prime number from this, uh, alpha 2, it's, it's going to equal to 1. 
So then I'm saying I'm gonna in how many objects do I have? I have R choose two objects. So then I'm ending R choose two. And in the same pattern, you can write that this is the value of our negative one choose R. Uh, this is the value of our sum. But what is this? This I already did in another videos, but let me repeat this process. I'm gonna write the answer right away. So that's actually the whole thing is equals to zero. But why equals to zero? Uh, let's. Oh, I yeah, I forgot something. The things that I forgot here we're choosing prime numbers, but we have that is a case when d equals to one. So when d equals to one. Uh, we have only one term, so this term when d equals to 1. And for all these terms, uh, d is bigger than 1. Okay, and then uh, let's write the 0. 0 is 1 minus 1 to the power of r, because 0 to the power of r is 0. And here I'm going to use formal binomial Newton. And I can see I will have 1 minus and choose 1 plus, uh, and not n, r choose 1 plus uh, r choose 2 uh, minus 1 square minus uh, plus r choose 3 minus 1 cube, etc. Uh, r choose r minus 1 to the power of r. And here I can see I have 1 minus r choose 1 plus r choose 2 minus r choose 3 and the last one minus 1 to the power of r, r choose r. And yes indeed, the whole thing is going to be equal to 0. Uh, 